and I because we have never done this kind of thing before. And so it's kind of new and fun for us too. But um, I just want to talk a little bit about our study and kind of where where we've been and the work that we went to today. So as you know, our question this year was why do people move? And that question of why would people leave their home to go to a new home with new hopes and struggling through hardships has been um, such an interesting study for us and also has helped us understand connections between different groups of people over different times and um, you know that drive that encourages people over time to leave home for a new place. So um, I think one of the biggest contributions were the stories that some of you shared and that we got to learn from the stories of the people in your family who had the courage and the chutzpah, whatever it is, to leave home. And that's how we all got here. So um, so that's been a wonderful part of the study. And I want to let you know that the people that you will hear from today are all people who experience real hardships. You'll hear their stories of hardship, poverty, lack of opportunities, religious persecution, oppressive governments, racist and segregationist laws, slavery, and all of them who had great hope for a new life, whether it was in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania as a free state, in America, in the North. Um, and yesterday we were talking about our study and we were just um, talking about how the stories that we're telling are um, really composites of stories that the kids have been exposed to through the stories that you've shared, through the books we've read, through videos we've watched, through the trips we've taken, and that um, there are so many other stories. And there are stories of people who decided to stay. And there are slaves who were okay with their treatment. They had kind masters and they didn't seek to leave. There are stories of people who had hardship at home and stayed and worked through it and kept their families there. There were people in the South who found ways to cope with segregation. There are you know, people all over the world who've coped with religious persecution and stayed, but that the stories we're telling are the stories of people who decided to leave. And um, because America is a land of immigrants, all of those people are the reason why we're here. So um, anyway, uh, I think one of the greatest parts of this whole process has been that all of the kids had to take information from all different parts of this study and kind of create a character that they fleshed out through synthesizing all this information. So it was a really good learning process. And for the people that were playing a certain character, they we had a little bit of information on them from our trip to the Seaport Museum back in October. And they did a lot of work to research these amazing people who um, either escaped slavery or helped others escape. Um, so we are starting our um, <coughs> our presentation today with a scene from the Philadelphia waterfront. It couldn't actually have happened because some of these things happened at different times, but all in the same time frame of the mid-1850s, the mid-1800s, I guess. Um, and then we're going to share a scene from a steerage uh, section of a ship, a scene from Ellis Island, and a scene from uh, a family during the Great Migration. So enjoy. Hey, um, let me ask something. If you're sitting in the back and you can't hear, would you just put a hand up and that'll be a signal to the kids that so that you should talk louder. Is that okay? If you see somebody put their hand up, that means they can't hear you that well because we really do want everybody to be able to be heard. Okay? takes place in the mid-1800s at the Philadelphia waterfront. Here we will meet people who are escaping slavery and helping others escape. Here are a few of the characters. Here are green. Can you imagine squeezing yourself into a small crate for 18 hours so you could escape slavery and be free to marry and help children in your three? James Ford, one of Philadelphia's wealthiest men, a sailmaker who owned a sailmaking shop. Ford was never a slave, but he fought to make sure other blacks escaped slavery. J. 
Jane Johnson, a brave woman who desperately wanted to be free from slavery. She let people know she wanted her freedom. While traveling through Philadelphia, a free city, anti-slavery activists helped her and her two sons off the sh leave her leave her master and slavery behind. And Pastor Mark Williamson, a white Quaker who grew up believing slavery was wrong and spent most of his time in jail over it. He and William still freed Jane Johnson on a ferry at the waterfront in Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Mayor Green. I'm 18 years old. I was a slave when I lived in Baltimore. I had jobs like making breakfast, lunch, dinner, and helping to clean the mission's clothes. Mr. Adams calls my turn now. My time, please. I mailed myself in a chest to Philadelphia to be free to marry Mr. Adams. And, and when we have children, they will be free. I was constantly the clear. Every so often, Mr. Adams' mother, who I was traveling with, opened the crate so I could get some fresh air. I arrived in Philadelphia and met Mr. Adams, and we were able to get married and be free. I'm James Fortin. Right now, I'm making some sales. My workers were of all color and religion. What? Yes, but it's a long story. I can tell you who. So, I was working with my father as a sailmaker for Robert Bridges, a white man. Since he was against slavery, he hired me. When Mr. Bridges got older, he did something unheard of. He, hold, he sold his sail off to me, a black man. Now I owned an important business on the waterfront. Now as the boss and a wealthy, well-known black man, I could hire anyone I wanted. So I hired black men and white men. I, I, knew, I know I'm a free man, but I still had worries for myself and my children. Unlike white people, I was worried my, my children might become slaves when they grew older. I know our country will be free. I am nervous, but women brave for my children. Oh, sorry, I didn't get to introduce myself. I am Jane Johnson. I'm a domestic slave for a man named John Hill Wheeler. I have two sons. Their names are Daniel and Isaiah. Daniel is six and Isaiah is 12. I used to have three sons until poor Philip was sold when he was only nine. I will never let that happen again. I've always wanted to be freed, except I've never had a chance. As soon as Mr. Wheeler announced he was going to Nicaragua on vacation, I started making plans, and look at what happened. As soon as we landed, I told everyone at the hotel that I wanted to be free. And well, you know the rest of the story. Right now, I'm walking off the ferry, and the most amazing thing just happened to me. While on the ferry, Pastor Williamson, who was well known that his first views that slavery is wrong, held back Mr. Wheeler while telling him of the rights to be a free woman in Pennsylvania, William Still is walking Daniel Isaiah and I off the ferry to our freedom. I am very nervous and excited too. I mean, I'm very excited and nervous too. What if somehow we don't become free? As a domestic slave, I had to take care of John Wheeler's children, welcome his guests, clean his house, and cook. And on top of that, I have two kids of my own and I hardly even get to see them. Being a slave has been an awful experience, but now I am free and I hope we live a long and happy life in Pennsylvania. I couldn't bear to hear about Jane Johnson being pushed around with no pay. She was born a slave, and she didn't do anything to deserve the treatment she got. I bet if she knew she was in a free state, then she would have already been free. I had to tell her about the law. I couldn't just watch. I am going to William Still. We work together in an anti-slavery organization. Hello there. I suppose I should introduce myself. I am Passmore Williamson. I was born a Quaker, and I'm living as a Quaker, which is how I came to my beliefs about black and white people being equal. It's just not fair. When the hotel workers let me know that a slave was in the hotel and determined to escape, I got angry, really angry. Why should a woman be kept a slave when she was in Philadelphia, a free city? It's crazy. That's why I helped her. We watched her and her children walk off the ship and walk off the ship and off to their new lives.
section of the ship where tickets didn't cost as much. The steerage conditions were horrible. You only got two meals a day. There was still bread, raw meat, and potatoes. The beds were stacked three high with six or seven people on each bunk. Since the sleeping quarters were so close, you had an 85% chance of getting a sickness. There were flies flying around everywhere. People got trachoma in Africans. People were throwing up everywhere. The dirty water caused many people to get cholera. Really, the reason steerage was bad was because of the blood. No one really cared about the people in steerage. This told us about four immigrants from different places in Europe throughout the coast of steerage. Oh, how I wish I did not have to leave Italy. This boat is awful, it tosses into itself. My sister is vomiting on the boat below us. I am proud to say I have not vomited once on this trip. Papa says I have Ustemico di Fado, a son of man of iron. I hate traditions. If they did not exist, I would never be here. I'll explain. Papa was the youngest boy in the family, so the farm went to his eldest brother, and Papa said we shall leave, because the man said there are not too many traditions, and it does not matter if you are eldest or youngest, just how hard you work. And Papa works very hard. I have three siblings, 13-year-old Gabriella, 7-year-old Luca, 8-month-old Marco, and me, Sophia. <coughs> I am worried. People around me are getting pox all over their bodies. I spend many hours up on deck every day when there is more fresh air, so I hope I do not get sick. I have heard stories of quarantine, where you are said if you seem unhealthy or wrong, if you have cholera, trachoma, smallpox, or diphtheria. My hope when we get to America is to finally learn to live the way you Why, oh why, did Mother have to make us come here in the first place? Fine, fine, I'll tell you my story. It all started when Philip, my older brother, told Mother about the boys in his class being chosen for the German army. Let me tell you something about Mother. She gets worried very easily, as you probably know. Super worried about this winter war. We escaped Germany on a small boat and rode the boat to Liverpool, where our boat was docked. I thought tea would be better, but it's not. The food is either spoiled or rotten. The bread is moldy and the potatoes are rotten. Um, we only get two meals a day. <coughs> Each meal we get potatoes, potatoes, and more potatoes. But Mother still has to. I'm glad I'm not <coughs> in Ireland. It was terrible, and I was poor. I hear the Irish Catholics are persecuted in America, but I hope that's not true for us. I know so many things about Ireland already, especially the potatoes. <clears throat> May the rose rise to meet you. May the winds always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. And may God hold you in the hall of his hand. My mother used to say that to me. I miss her very much. But sadly, my father's dead. I don't even remember him. All I know is that he was a very kind man. But my husband is also a kind man. He worked very hard to earn the money <clears throat> that, that he sent me for a ticket. I'm grateful that he worked so hard to get my freedom. And he already has a place to stay, live in America. And we hope to have children. And imagine all the opportunities our children will have. This ship is terrible. The water is filthy as coffee grinds in Flavor. But still to have found it was before the game of the coffee grinds. The floors were even worse. They are so dusty they look like they haven't been cleaned in eons. The bed was the worst of all. They were squeaky. Dirty and thin. I it, it is horrible. I can't believe. Wait. 
It was almost impossible to sleep. All the ship kept you rocking back and forth, mostly in the night time. Like, it, I worked super long to save up for this ticket, and this is what I get? I can't believe it. All this money to where my name could get changed and possibly get sent back. And not even get my money back. I need to calm down. All, all, on the plus side, I might make it, and all my hard work will pay off. I will get a good place to live, find furniture, and enough room for all of my family to come and join me. Welcome to the Ellis Island Tableau. This family consists of the mother, Esther, and her two children, 12-year-old Yehuda and 6-year-old Rachel. They are traveling through Ellis Island. This family immigrated from Moldova, originally Bessarabia. They are immigrating because of religious persecution. They, like many other families, are following their father, Esther's husband. There was lots of hope, fear, and courage at Ellis Island. Most families are afraid of inspection. There were lots of parts to inspection. Some officers were too eager for money. They would steal immigrants' papers and degrees and sell them for a lot of money. Immigrants were also scared of being quarantined or being sent back. If you were sick, you would be sent. If you were really sick, you would be sent back. Many immigrants passed through Ellis Island successfully and made a good life in America. I can't believe we're already here in America. I'm nervous and really hungry. Oh, hi, I'm Esther. I have two children, Yehuda and Rachel. We are from Moldova and we travel in steerage. I hope I can find their father. This trip has been so hard for us, but we are still holding on to the hope that we are the greatness star of our lives. Life is Jesus is so important to our family so that when the synagogue closed, we still had Shabbat in the closet where it was private to our family. We couldn't even say Jews are Jewish in Moldova. I'm just hoping this new life is how I picture it. I heard the roads are paved with gold. I surely hope my children get good education in America. In Moldova, they couldn't even go to school because of our religion. If they did, we would be risking jail. Let me say something. Moldova was not great for our other relatives, but it was so bad for us that we left. Even though the trip was awful, I still have hope for a better life for our family. I can't believe it. We finally get to live in the United States. Oh, I'm Yehuda. I'm 12 years old, and I live with my mother and my little sister. My father is already in America and got us a place to live in New York. I brought a picture of my father and the samovar. A samovar is a special teapot that was passed down through the generations in our family. I brought it because it holds all the promises of our family. 
that God will bless us, that life will have a flavor, that we will not know hunger, and that we will know love and joy, and that we will never be poor. I also brought a menorah so we could celebrate Hanukkah, left just before a pogrom. It's an attack against Jews. Hooray, we're finally in America. My mommy used to tell me stories about America, but now we are actually in America, next in line for inspection at Ellis Island. I am so nervous. My name is Rachel. I'm so glad we are here. Our life in Moldova was so hard. We are Jewish, and I remember having Shabbat in the closet. We brought only one suitcase that held our menorah, a tiny bit of clothes, our Shabbat candlesticks, and my rag doll. People all around me are talking about something called quarantine and being sent back. Wait, sent back? Sent back to the terrible conditions in Moldova? I couldn't stand the thought of that. I still wonder why I couldn't go to school in Moldova, but my mama said it was because of our religion. Now she says that America is the land of opportunity where your religion doesn't matter. She says the streets <coughs> are paved with gold. I just hope America is really like that. My job as a medical inspector is really hard. I see around a thousand people a day. I worry that I'll miss a disease, and if I do, America will be completely sick. On the other hand, I want to let everybody in. It's a really hard choice. I become so good, it takes me only six seconds. When I do the medical exam, I put a button hook in the immigrant's eye. I do that to check for trachoma, which forms scabs inside the person's eyelids. I see immigrants walking up the steps of the medical exam to see if they have muscle problems. I then mark them with their coats with chalk to, so the doctors can see what is wrong with them. Some of them are for X for insanity, P for lung, LL for left leg, and CT for trachoma. Immigrants are really afraid of my exams, but I only send back 2% of people who come through. The button hook is the worst. People are really afraid of it, but it really doesn't hurt that much. I hate to see the sadness of immigrants I send back. for two weeks. I'm worried that my mom won't be able to do so well without me to help her. Americans and burning their homes. The schools only had one heater and old books because whites didn't believe that African Americans were equal to them and didn't think they deserved equal education. For all these reasons, African Americans moved away. 
Some old people stayed behind while their family moved because they were too old to work and help the family. Most of the time, the father went first to earn a living by working in a factory or on the railroad. Some families were arrested and prevented from leaving the South because the South needed them to keep them. Hello, I'm John Miller. I heard that there were jobs to be had in Washington Camp near Chicago. I'm currently a field worker. I don't own the farm, my employer does. I am I'm worrying about my family about my family not making enough money. Oh I I do wish I could get a well paying job. I need enough money to support my family. We currently live in in Alabama. I need to support my family and I can't in Alabama. I'm I'm sick and tired of this mis of of this mistreatment. I I am not a boy. I have been called boy too many times. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot work my finger to the bone every day and get paid very little. I cannot stand to, I cannot stand by and watch my son go to an all black school, uh, go to an all black school, um, school getting very little education while the white children go to a better school. I cannot let our family suffer. That's why I'm going to Chicago and I hope to send for them soon. Mm -hmm. Oh, John, all right. I hope you can find a job in the, con as in construction worker. But if, but if not, they say there are jobs in the lonely arts and classes. I'm Georgina Miller, and my husband, John Miller, is about to go to Chicago. Once he gets a job and has money, he will send for me and my son, William. Don't worry, I'll be there to help. Do what you need to do to find us a safe place to live, and I've got the rest. I will clean people's houses, wash other people's laundry, and take care of all of our chores while John is home. I'll have to work the garden and grow the food, cook, and take care of Lily too. But I will have help from my sisters and brother, and I know the children will help me too. And of course, the people from our church. Bye, Dad. My name is William. I never wanted him to leave, but I guess it would be for the greater good because segregation made their lives horrible. Signs telling us where to go and where we cannot go, barely getting any money for hard work on your knees all week, picking the cotton crop. That's why my dad went to get a good paying job in a good home in Chicago and hopefully a good school for me <coughs> because the school I go to is only for black children and it is bad. <coughs> Around the wood burning stove. Hopefully, I will see him soon in Chicago. I wish I could come, darling. But I'm too old to go. I will miss you so much. Are you sure be okay? Are you sure you be okay, John? I'm. I, I am. I'm not coming because I'm too old. Do you understand? I have lived he here my whole life. I was born here in Alabama, and I want to die here. I love you all. I do, but. I'm too old to go. Maybe I will take in some laundry to help us take some money to live on. At home, I will think of you every day and pray for you every night. John, what kind of work do you have to get in Chicago? Me, I'm too old to go looking for work and not be doing any good for this family. And if I get sick, everyone will have to take care of me. I will miss you. I do know what I'm good at. <laughs> I made these baskets of goodies for you. Jars of lemonade, a pot of gumbo, freshly made cookies, and a loaf of bread. I know you cannot just walk into any old diner because they do not serve people like us. I hope you have a long and safe ride to live on. Two layers. Two layers. Two layers.